G'day Spuddies. I've had a question that I'd like to answer and it's about blood sugar. Uh, Laura wrote to me a few weeks ago actually. I'm sorry I've taken a long time to get back to you Laura but uh, I'm, I'm doing better these days. Anyway, Laura's question was about blood sugar and, uh, and about she's worried about carbs raising blood sugar and about potatoes in particular raising blood sugar and, um, and the problem with high blood sugar and insulin and all that. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about that today. So I've made some diagrams, some of my amazing diagrams. Here we go. So the red lines are the outside of a blood vessel. And we've got a cell here. And here, this little bit is called an insulin receptor. And this bit is the glucose receptor. So obviously that blue cell there with a G in it is a glucose. The Fs are fat cells. And the I is an insulin cell. Okay, so... On a typical uh, person that's eating a, a normal amount of fat, like normal as in what society considers a normal amount of fat, which is uh, really a pretty high fat diet, this is what happens. When we eat, we eat a lot of fat and we eat carbs as well, glucose, carbohydrates. And then carbohydrate cell, cells come into the bloodstream and they want to go into the glucose receptors. They want to get into the cell, right? But the door's closed. And the reason why it's closed is because we also have fat cells around. And this insulin receptor, as you can see, the space for the insulin to go is being taken up by fat, by fat cells. All right. So think of it like the insulin is a key and the key is trying to go into this lock. And once the key goes into this lock, it will open up the, the glucose receptor so the glucose can go in. All right. But it, the insulin can't get there because the fat's blocking it. All right, so because the fat's blocking it, what happens next? The glucose can't get in, so we get more and more glucose. We get a blood sugar spike. There's a lot of blood in this bloodstream now uh, because the glucose can't get into the cell. The fat's here still blocking the insulin uh, receptor. And the insulin and the body knows that, hey, we need to unlock this cell, let the glucose in. We need that to happen so we can start bringing the, the glucose in here. Um, so that we, need to, we need to get in here somehow. So we need to make more insulin. So the, the blood sugar spike also causes an insulin spike because the insulin, the body's producing more insulin because it needs to try to find a way to get this insulin into this receptor. Try and make this pen work a bit better. Right, so the insulin's trying to get to that receptor, all right? And at the moment, it can't. Uh, so it, it produces more and more insulin to try to bully its way in there in a, in, a, in a way, manner of speaking. So then it produces more insulin, more and more insulin. We've got a huge insulin spike, but finally it's managed to push its way past the fat cells and it managed to bully its way in there. And bang, we've, we've attached to the insulin receptor. So the glucose receptor is opened up and the glucose starts flowing into the blood cells. Right, this is happening in every cell in the body, right? So every cell has an insulin receptor. Every, every cell has the, the pathway for the glucose to get in. And every cell in the body is dealing with the same situation. All right, so right now, finally, we've got the glucose into the cell. But the problem is we've got an insulin spike. We've got a huge amount of insulin in the bloodstream. And it's going to take a long time for the insulin to disappear. It's going to take a long time for the glucose to, to get into the bloodstream. So what this, is, what this means is we've got a, an insulin spike that's going to stay elevated for a long time. And we've got a glucose spike that's going to stay elevated for a long time. And both of those things cause problems in the body. When they're elevated for a long time, we've got a long spike. That is a problem and we want to avoid it. So... Most people, the common logic seems to be get rid of the glucose. Just stop eating carbs, stop eating glucose, and then you don't have to worry about trying to find a way. You don't, it doesn't matter. The insulin doesn't have to get to the, um, to the insulin receptor because there's no glucose anyway. There's nothing trying to get into the cell. So, we'd, so the insulin, there's no insulin required. So there can just be heaps of fat everywhere. All right, and, and then we don't have blood sugar spikes and we don't have insulin spikes because it's just not required. All right, is that curing diabetes though or is it just changing the problem? All right, so, or curing the spikes or all that. Now, if, here's a different idea. If we remove the fat from the diet, not totally remove, but drastically cut it down, you've only got two little fat cells. They're floating around. 
they might attach to the odd cell, but most of them they won't. So the insulin, we've got one little insulin, it just attaches, opens the door, glucose flows in naturally, and we're, we're all good, there's no issue. All right, so in this circumstance, yes, the body still produces insulin, but not a lot, just enough to go and open up the, just, just, just to go and attach to the insulin receptors and open up the pathway for the glucose to get into the cell. All right, in this situation, when there's not a lot of fat in the diet, then we have a short insulin spike. Yes, the insu uh, sorry, we have a short glucose spike, a short blood sugar spike. It goes up, but then it goes down pretty quickly because the insulin comes, attaches to the receptor, opens the door, and, and the glucose comes in. And in that circumstance, blood sugar goes up and then it comes back down pretty quickly. It's a normal part of eating. When you eat, you get your, everything you eat has to go into your bloodstream to be transported around the body. The insulin production is just a mechanism for getting the glucose into the cell. That's it. So you have a short, you have a short glucose spike, and then it goes back to normal. You have a short insulin spike, and then that goes back to normal, and you've got no problems. The problem comes when you eat the high fat diet, like you eat the high fat diet. Oh, I'll go back another one. <laughs> when you eat the high fat diet and you get higher insulin you get higher insulin levels and you get higher glucose levels and they stay elevated for a long time while this problem gets sorted out and then just in time for it to get sorted out and the cells get into the body cells oh, sorry the glucose gets into the cells then straight away you have another high fat meal and we go back to the same situation all right so this is the problem that we want to avoid we want to avoid alternating between here and here all right, and we want to we want to spend more time just allowing things to flow and work the way they're supposed to. Insulin attaches to the cell, opens the door, glucose flows in, blood sugar comes back down to normal, and everyone's happy. All right, if you know we hear a lot of people saying that low carb, high fat diets cure diabetes, they don't cure anything because as soon as you know they don't cure it, because as soon as all they're doing is taking the glucose out of the equation. If the glucose isn't there, then the insulin's not required. And then we've got fat everywhere, and that's causing all sorts of other problems. And so we don't have insulin spikes, we don't have uh, glucose spikes, because we're not eating the carbohydrate. That doesn't mean anything's cured. That means that the, the fat, we're still in this situation, take out the glucose. Imagine the glucose is not there because you're not eating it. We've still got fat all over the place. We don't have insulin either, but the fat is still there. So as soon as you start eating the glucose again, that means the, the mechanism is still there for, for the exact same process to happen. You've not changed the mechanism, you've not changed the underlying cause. All right, so I've gone on a bit long now, but I hope that makes sense. Uh, if you remove the fat, or at least dramatically reduce the fat, then you're treating the cause of the problem, whereas if you reduce the carbohydrate, then you're just dealing with a symptom. So let's start working on treating causes rather than symptoms. There you go. I hope that answers the question. Uh, I hope that makes things clearer. And that's that. If you've got any more questions, then email me, andrew at spudfit.com. I'll put my email address in the description. Uh, email me if you've got any more questions. And if you uh, also email me if you'd like to book a free 15-minute uh, personal coaching call and I can help you with any problems that you've got. Uh, that's it. Enjoy yourselves, everyone, and spot up.